Okay, we good? We good? <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Cherry Valentine and welcome to my YouTube channel. <laughs> oh, okay, let me try that again, let me try it again. I need to, I need like a really good intro. I feel like because I'm starting a YouTube channel, I need to like have a really cute introduction to all my videos. So let me try and find one right now. <clears throat> Hi everyone, it's Cherry Valentine here. No, I don't like it, it's too formal. Hi everyone, Cherry here. Why am I shouting? <laughs> Hi everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Cherry Valentine and welcome to my YouTube channel. <laughs> natural, natural. I'm just talking to the camera in the spare room. Who cares? Hi you dolls, you all right? Basically, all I'm gonna say is I really apologize in advance for all the lighting, the sound quality, my makeup and everything in this video. <laughs> and if you're watching, good luck because it's gonna be a journey. And no, I've not had a drink. I'm not drunk, I'm completely stone cold sober. I've not done anything to compromise my mental stability right now. We can call it stability. <laughs> this is um, my first video on my Cherry Valentine YouTube channel and I'm not gonna lie to you, I have dabbled in YouTube before. A long time ago, I'm gonna say about five or six years ago now, we did vlogs, we did like spoof things and it was really, really fun. But I stopped it, I deleted all the videos, I kept them privately obviously, I might release them and share some content one day when I'm ready. So yeah, I just wanted to start it again, because why not? A little bit of summit, summit to keep me going, do you know what I mean? And I really love editing videos. I mean, I say I love editing videos. The editing on this is probably gonna be absolutely shite. So don't judge me, I've not done it in a while. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Cherry Valentine from RuPaul's Drag Race. I'm not just from RuPaul's Drag Race, but I have just done RuPaul's Drag Race UK season two, which I'm very proud of. And I am a drag queen, a drag artiste, and I'm a performer, dancer, singer. I can do it all. I can't actually do it all, but I like to say that I can do it all because it makes me feel better. <laughs> I've just made this look last night and it's fabulous and I thought it's typical Cherry Valentine. So why not do like a little get ready with me? Just get a drink. If anyone's got one of these, I am obsessed with these glasses. Absolutely obsessed. I hate when you're having a drink when and you like run out mid drink and you're still thirsty and you have to like go and get another drink. So that's why I like this. I don't know why I'm telling you this, but I'm telling you it. <laughs> I've literally been rambling now for about 25 minutes. So I'm going to just jump into it. Today, I'm going to do a little get ready with me. I put out on Twitter and Instagram that I'm filming this video. So I've got a couple of questions that I'm going to answer as we go along and just have some fun conversations with myself in my spare room. My bed's literally strapped to the wall right now because I needed space to put this little set up on. So without further ado, I'm gonna slip into my house coat and put a wig cap on and get this makeup on my face. So now that all my makeup's off and this is literally completely barefaced, 100% with a bit of moisturizer on, I never ever would feel comfortable showing people me without like, with nothing on my face. Even if one of my friends came around to the house, I used to always have to like go upstairs quickly and put some foundation on or like fill in my brow a little bit because I was really like paranoid about my skin and then watching Drag Race and seeing, seeing myself in HD and I used to really suffer from like bad skin so I can't believe I actually went on TV and took all my makeup off but it's a lot better now I wouldn't say I've got the best skin in the world but the texture wise is a lot smoother because I need a little bit of plumping here and there I use these at the minute so these are face tapes so the actual tape on these face tapes you just get them off Amazon but the actual tape on them isn't strong enough for me anyway so I just like to coat them in a bit of spirit gum I sort of like see where it needs to go. So I want a bit, little bit of lift here. I do filler and Botox myself, but I would never do it on myself <laughs> because I don't know. Like I, I don't, I can put needles in people all the time. I can give injections, I can do Botox, I can do filler all over people's faces. But when a needle comes towards me, um, it terrifies me. I don't know what it is. Some people put them here to give the eye a lift. But I, I just use these basically to um, stop my makeup cracking as much. Okay, so this wouldn't be a get ready with me if I wasn't getting ready rather than just chatting and shit for uh, however long this video is going to go on for. And I only use a little bit of foundation. One of the questions I got asked was, what got you into all the spooky horror stuff? I love all things spooky, so I'm in love with your aesthetic. That was from Sakura. So thank you so much, Sakura. I'm obsessed with anything horror. Anything spooky, anything scary, I'm obsessed with. I don't know why. I've just always really loved horror movies. I really love, my favorite movies are like Saw. This looks like a lot of foundation, but I do promise I'll blend it out. And you have to remember we're doing rag makeup here. <laughs> yeah, so my spooky aesthetic really comes from just my love of like horror films. I've never been the bubblegum person. I don't, I don't really vibe with like, 
pastels and bunny rabbits and candy floss. It's really just not my vibe. <laughs> I like blood and sparkles and dark grungy but really high sex glamour. I don't know where that comes from. Maybe it's just like a really like, I don't know. I, don't, I really don't know where it comes from. I just love it. And my favourite type of movies are between chick flicks and horrors. One of my pet peeves in drag or just in makeup in general is when you can see skin that's on show and it's not the same colour as your face. Um, a lot of people ask me about my tattoo. I'm not going to go into it. It's a terrible tattoo. I wish I never got it. I always cover it up. It's, it's horrendous. Ingrid has asked me, are you still in contact, even if virtually at the moment, with some of the cast queens? And yeah, I am in contact with all of the queens from season two. We talk quite regularly. We've got a WhatsApp group. I am absolutely terrible at replying to text messages. If you know me personally, you can honestly vouch for that. I like to start typing something out and then I'll leave it and then completely forget about it and then come back like three days later and be like, oh God, I didn't reply to them. <laughs> so I have another question from Mecca G and thank you, Mecca G. I think that's Mecca, Mecha. And they say, what was the process of crafting your drag persona and the looks you embody like? Yes, I love you and everything that you do, even if that you do includes losing. <laughs> most definitely love at first headpiece fall. <laughs> Thank you very much and I agree. Like, I love everything I do apart from losing. <laughs> yeah, I did ask afterwards if they were going to keep that in and they were like, don't worry about it, it's fine, we're not going to keep it in. And the next thing you know, I'm watching it and they've kept it in. <laughs> but it's funny. And that's, that's the whole thing about Drag Race and just like TV in general. You can be however you're going to be, but however they edit you, that's, that's that. Everyone said to me like, when they've watched the show, I've just been me and I really have just been me. I didn't go in with any agenda. I didn't go in trying to be someone. I literally just went in like, let's give this a go. <laughs> and then I did give it a go and maybe I should have went in with an agenda, I don't know. <laughs> It was fabulous and it was such an amazing experience and I'll, I'll never like forget it and it's really changed me as a person but that's a story for another day. So the process of crafting my drag persona, I didn't even answer the question, is um, having fun. I really don't like rules and stuff in drag and people say oh you should do this, you should do that but I really just think do whatever makes you feel like fabulous and do, do whatever you want to do because there really is no rules to it, there really isn't. I've got a question from Madeline saying when did you start to like the colour red? I liked the colour red from as long as I can remember to be honest, it's always been my absolute favourite colour and I just really love Valentine's Day, I don't know what it is. Everyone asks me why do you like Valentine's Day so much and I really don't know, I just love the idea of love. I don't see love is like a feeling i see it as like a sense do you know what i mean it's not an emotion to me it's like a like a sixth sense or a seventh sense because i also do see dead people but that's another story for another day <laughs> I just, I'm obsessed with it. I, I think it's a really beautiful colour. The thing about red is that it can actually mean so many different things. You see red, you can either mean that you really hate someone or you hate something, or you're really madly in love with it. And I love that, that confusion between hate and love. So Georgia has asked, what made you want to become a mental health nurse and what does mental health mean to you? Mental health is, it really does mean everything to me and I think it means everything to a lot of people and it should mean everything to a lot of people because it's who we are. It's what we feel, it's how we see things, it's our personality. It's really what makes us us, our mental health. People say, oh, I've never had mental health and they throw the mental health around but every single person on this planet has mental health, the same as they have physical health and sometimes we put mental health to a side and put physical health to the forefront but they actually really do come hand in hand and working through the pandemic and doing a lot of physical health work I've really come to appreciate that they really do go hand in hand with one another it really does mean everything to me and that's not me being dramatic or anything but it does and being a mental health nurse it really has opened my eyes to the world and a lot of things that go on in the world and it's really made me have different different perspectives on things because before I even knew what mental health was or before I even started working in mental health I did um I did have opinions on people that I really don't have anymore because of understanding mental health a little bit more. I hate the terms, like, I hate the terms crazy and like when someone, like if you say someone's crazy and things, but I used to feel like some people were crazy, but I know that no one's crazy and no one's sane. And I think that's really important to get to grips with because I think it really makes you change your perspective on everything if you really understand 
that no one in the world is 100% sane and no one in the world is crazy. There's no such thing as normal and there's no such thing as mentally stable because we're all, we're all honestly different levels and what's mentally stable classed as in this country is not classed as mentally stable in another country. So it really just comes down to people's perceptions. It's literally just your opinion and opinions can be based on some facts, but facts don't cover everyone. Being a mental health nurse is uh, incredible and it's made me learn a lot about things and made me appreciate a lot of things and come to terms with a lot of stuff myself, but it's also made me realize that I hate labels. It's important to some people and I really understand that some people like, like having those labels and things and they like to label themselves and it gives them clarity and it helps them clear the mind of things and helps them put things into boxes and sort things out in their own mind. But me personally, it makes things feel restrictive and I just think everyone's, everyone's everyone and everyone's beautiful how they are. Like, so let's continue with the makeup. <laughs> So Kayla, um, Kayla Nicole asked me on Twitter, where do you see yourself in five years? And honestly, I see myself everywhere. <laughs> so Megan underscore H1019 has asked me on Twitter, did you have a backup idea for surprise surprise runway? Or what was your first idea? Honestly, hand on heart, my first idea was to do a flip into an outfit reveal. Don't know what outfit I was gonna do. And then we talked about it. It was literally the day before because I'd, I'd put runway off. I put the reveal, surprise, surprise, runway off for so long because I was I was in two minds about it. So I eventually went with the idea of a gender reveal party. And I don't think some of the judges really fully got it at the time. It wasn't necessarily about the reveal. I wanted to make a statement. My view on gender is that there's there's really no boundaries to it and you can be however you want to be and you can feel however you feel. It's, it's basically a gender reveal. There is no gender to reveal because when we're doing gender reveal parties, we're not technically revealing the gender, we're re revealing the sex. So it was sort of like a play on that. But I'm really glad that I went with what I went with and I really stick by the message of it. So I'm really happy at the gender reveal, non-gender revealing runway. <laughs> So Gregory has asked me on Twitter, how has your drag aesthetic evolved slash changed into the Cherry Valentine you are today? And it's evolved a million times over. When I first started doing makeup, I wasn't even called Cherry, I was called Delta Devotion. It was a whole play on like Devoted to the D, horrendous and all. I changed to Cherry Valentine and the name Cherry Valentine actually comes from a few different things. I really like Cherry Bakewells. Do you know the like glass, glassy cherries that you get on top? Love them. And I love, love, Love cherry like shower like hair smells and like bath smells so when I was in the shower once and I was like I need a drag name I'm starting a drag shift in a couple of days my first drag shift and I was like I really need a name that's gonna stick I was using a cherry bath wash and I thought I love cherries sounds like sherry my granny drinks sherry and I love my granny that's not even a word of a lie that's the, this is the thought process that went through my head at the time <laughs> I'm spending too much time in my eyebrows, I have no idea why. I can't find my black cream, so I'm just gonna go in with brown and then set it all black and hope for the best. So now that we're done with the eyeshadow. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> now that we've finished the look, I'm gonna go and get into my look. <laughs> Today I'm gonna be using the Solemni palette. So Nox Sin has asked on Twitter, how do you feel about your drag artistry? How do you feel your drag artistry has evolved from then pre-drag race to now post-drag race? And I would say it's evolved. I'm a completely different queen now. I am literally a different queen. This is a super quick eye and I, I can guarantee you, you're all thinking, what the hell's she doing? Look at the state of her face right now. She's just got a big black eye. She looks like, Excuse me, she looks like a panda, but I can promise you now, girls and boys and everything in between, it's gonna look fabulous. I look like Black Swan. <laughs> um, oh no, it's Tommy B. Tom's on Mars has asked me on Twitter, what is a city that you'd like to go to? New York. My partner keeps going on about it, how amazing it is, and I've never been, and I really just wanna go. And if I was gonna go, I'd love to go in winter time, because I love the winter. I really do love the winter. My favorite months of the year are November, December, January, because we've got Halloween, something like my birthday, Christmas time. The weather's really like cold and wet and rainy and snowy, really like dark nights, and if there's a clear sky and winter, you can really see the stars. And I just, I love it. I just love everything about it so much. Now I'm just gonna get some white cream. This is a white liquid lipstick. I keep feeling like I'm filming a makeup tutorial, but this isn't a makeup tutorial. I'm just chatting and 
do my makeup, I'm gonna get this little tiddly widdly brush and then just slap it on my eyes in the inner corners. I used to do the full cut crease where I like cut my whole eye out, but this is my go-to eye now, probably because it just saves so much time. So Katie Alice HK asked me, um, what's your favorite song to perform to? And honestly, I just love absolutely anything by Beyonce, Gaga, Whitney, Mariah, The Divas. I'll literally perform them for days, but the one that I perform to most is probably like Beyonce, Greenlight, or Gaga, G-U-Y. Just I love it. It's just something that you can throw yourself around to on stage and have a fabulous time. It's amazing. But when I'm performing, I normally do really super like conceptual performances. So I don't really do like all on dance numbers that much anymore. Well, I never used to. I started doing really cool things. Like I would do an, a demon. Halloween, I did this number where I was a witch and I was doing it to, um, do you know God's monsters of American Horror Story and I was like walking into the forest and I would sit down light my cauldron in the middle and there was all the fire going out and then I would like voice the demon the demon would come out I'd summon the demon and then I would actually get possessed by the demon but when I did that number once I had one of them fireworks where it just lights and that was what was making the the cauldron like look like it was on fire but it actually set a light like the cauldron was started melting on stage and I was thinking in my head I need to keep performing but at the same time the whole building's gonna burn down, so what do I do? So naturally, I just kept performing. Um, <laughs> obviously. So if you ever come and see a Cherry Valentine show, you never know what you're gonna expect, and you never know, like, don't expect anything because you never know what you're gonna get. I very rarely do the same performance twice. I just like to keep it fresh, and it's exciting, and I like performing things for the first time. So yeah, I like doing super conceptual performances, but at the same time, I'll, like, do Beyonce Greenlight and do a wig reveal and, like, flip myself around on stage. But it just depends how I'm feeling. I'm just gonna quickly contour my face. I use these to contour my face. Tarot cards. <laughs> I like to use tarot cards to contour my face and I pick a random one from the pack and today we've got strength. So that's a good sign. I can actually do tarot card readings. And someone said to me, why don't I do them at drag cons? Can you imagine? My booth is literally gonna be, if you want Botox and filler, or if you want your tarot cards reading, or if you want some therapy, come to my booth. <laughs> Contouring is my favourite part of makeup just because <laughs> you can't even do what I'm saying. Another question that I've been asked is from Megan and it says, can you give me a cookie please? Megan, I'm not going to lie to you. We actually went to Costco the other day, my favourite shop, shout out to Costco if you want to give me a deal, you know where I am. Um, <laughs> but Costco, I love Costco and I've actually got these right next to me. Got a cookie. How weird, you, you must have known that. Megan, you must have known that. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I just love cookies. I absolutely adore them. And these and the pastries with the custard inside. Um, okay, so Chrome Dens just asked, please start the video lip syncing to Nicki Minaj. And unfortunately, I've already started the video, but I don't think I can play Nicki Minaj because it's copyrighted, isn't it? So what I'm gonna do is do um, her verse from Monster. You ready? <coughs> You can be the king or watch the queen conquer. First things first, I'll eat your brains. Then I'll start rocking old teeth and fangs. Cause that's what I'm about. Monster shit. Parents are going to That's the monster too. Monster shit. Let me heal. That's the monster shit. And I'm all, all, all in the bank with a funny face. And if I'm fake, they ain't noticed cause my money ain't. This is probably wrong. I don't give a F U C K. But get Barbie. But make sure she's cake. Cheyenne attire. Paula color. Take a cheesecake. Now look at what you just saw. This is what you live for. <gasps> I'm a motherfucking monster. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong, that was probably completely wrong. So I'm sorry, Nicki Minaj. If you're watching this. <laughs> this is the part that really terrifies me about makeup. It's the intricate detail work. So I'm going to do my brows now. Yeah, so that's basically the brow. It's a little bit bushy today, a bit bushy than normal, but I'm I'm not mad at it. I'm really not. That rat queen, love rat queens. Come on, rats the rusical. So the rat queen says, what is one of your biggest strengths and weaknesses when it comes to drag, whether it being money, ideas, or stage presence? That's a lot to uh, go into. I think money-wise, I honestly don't believe that you need money to do drag. 
I think a lot of queens struggle with not having much money. I suppose you do need some, some money to get some stuff, but I very rarely spend a lot of money on my drag looks. If I'm making something like creative in the moment, I literally look in the kitchen. The other day I had a bit of sequin fabric left and some tin, like I found loads of tin foil. So I just made some tentacles for my shoulders. This look today, I was looking through the attic and I found an old skeleton in the, um, in the attic. You'll have stuff lying around the house that you can wear and you can shush up. So I don't think money comes into it. So I'll probably say that's one of my strengths about drag that I can just I'll, I'll make something out of anything and one of my weaknesses caring a lot what people thought about me especially was when I was on stage but obviously like I don't know what it's going to be like on stage now because I've not been on stage since drag race and everything happened so I could be exactly the same <laughs> No, I think one of my weaknesses is always, I really am really, really hard on myself. So I always want to be super polished and super perfect and everything, but it's not realistic. No one's like that. No one's good at everything and no one's perfect. Oh, I've just spelt it all over me. Can you imagine? Look at all of my fingers. <laughs> This is literally such a quick face. I was thinking, oh, I'm gonna sit down, get ready with me, but it's like I'm getting ready for a gig. It's took me like 40 minutes, this is really good. Now that I've done my most powders, I love to use this spray. This is the Krylon Fixing Spray, Fixier Spray, Professional Makeup. It's like in a hairspray can, it's perfect, you get loads. So yeah, I'm just gonna spray all this everywhere. I also love it because it smells like um, really clinical. <laughs> This is not my fan, by the way. This is um, my partner's fan, Daddy. Can you imagine me calling myself Daddy? <laughs> Someone's asked me on Instagram, can we watch out for an album? <laughs> I mean, because this is my first YouTube video, I guess I can say I am gonna dip my toes into everything. So who knows? I might do an album, might not. <laughs> and I can't really talk when I'm doing my lips, so I apologise. <laughs> Big A Admiral has asked me, what's your best advice for a student psych nurse during these times? And my advice to a student psych nurse and any student in general, and any nurse in general, is just look after yourself and look after your mental health because I'm such a mental health advocate. And I know obviously like I work in mental health and I should like want to talk about it and stuff, but I really do care about it. Just go with the flow. Don't put pressure on yourself and just try and enjoy it while you can. And if you need to ask questions, if you don't know anything, now is the perfect time to ask. I said I wouldn't get carried away, but I've got really carried away with a black, which is fine. I'm obsessed with a glossy lip. I just think it looks so fabulous. And you always remember, if nothing looks really good, it's what face tunes for. <laughs> so Girls of Paris has asked, if you could trade looks with any queen for a day, who would it be with and why? Probably be um, Jo, because I really love Jo's aesthetic. I think it's so fabulous. But to be honest, I'd wear, I'd wear most of the queen stuff. Depends what mood I was feeling in. Um, not all of them, though. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Chelsea Heights asked, dogs or cats? Absolutely 100%, 1 million percent dogs. I've got a dog, I've got a um, Labrador. I birthed him myself, his full name is Captain Buddington Gumdrop. Evans the first, first of his name, king of the arachnids, eater of foods, fattest of bellies. I just, he's so cute, he's adorable. I can't find my bottom lashes so I'm just literally going to draw some more. So that is my makeup all finished and I'm just going to get into my look now. Another question I keep getting asked is how do I deal with Scalera lenses and you're about to find out because I'm going to try and put them in now but not on camera. If you want to see that on camera let me know. I'm just going to get into my look, throw some rhinestones on my face and I shall be right back. And I'm also going to pull these up because you know. Look at that, look at the difference. So this is the final look. Thank you so much for watching this video today, tonight, this morning, whenever you're watching it. My name has been Cherry Valentine and I hope I got to answer, excuse me, I hope I got to answer some of your very burning questions. If you did enjoy this video, don't forget to give it a like, a thumbs up, a comment, a share, a subscribe, subscribe to my channel. I haven't got a clue what I'm talking about. I feel like, am I a YouTuber? Am I a YouTuber now? Who knows? <laughs> I also made this 
How fabulous. It's just the um, the back piece of the skeleton. I thought it'd be really cool. Imagine if you were in like a club and you needed a mask. This is a sick mask. This is in, like, I love it. It's fabulous. It also looks a bit like a um, guitar. I mean, it ain't in Cat Nigel. I've been married a long time ago. Where did you come from? Where did you go? Where did you come from, Cat Nigel? <laughs> Please stay safe, whatever you're doing, and don't forget that every day is Valentine's Day. <laughs> See you on the next one. <laughs>